Hey everybody, Swayze here, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about one of the hottest vehicles of the year, and as you can see behind me, of course, we're talking the Ford Maverick. Now, before we get started, I wanna extend a huge thank you to Ken Garf West Valley Ford for giving me the opportunity to review this vehicle for you all today. If you guys are in the market for this particular vehicle, or really any vehicle, on the lot, as you can see, it is packed with vehicles. Make sure you reach out to them. I'm gonna put their information down in the description below they are great to work with this is actually the dealership where i purchased my ford bronco from so make sure you check out their website and tell them that swayze sent you okay so what is the ford maverick let's talk about it if you guys have been living under a rock for the last uh, about year and a half you guys will have no idea what this is but as you can see this is a pickup truck but it's not just any pickup truck it is ford's only compact pickup truck. It's kind of a new segment that was invented by Ford and at the same time by Hyundai with its Hyundai Santa Cruz, but it's essentially a new take on pickup trucks. As we all know, this is what we think of when we think of pickup trucks, a full size or mid size pickup, something like the Ford Ranger. Well, this actually sits at the bottom of the totem pole. This is smaller than the Ford Ranger, which sits below the F-150. So this is the smallest pickup truck in Ford's lineup. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top 10 things that you should know about this Ford Maverick because, well, this thing is selling like crazy. Everybody's talking about it. People are paying markup on this thing. And, well, there's a lot of appeal to it. And that's what we're going to discuss in today's top 10. So without further ado, let's start off with the first thing you should know about the Ford Maverick. So first and foremost, what makes this vehicle so much different than this vehicle over here is this one is a body on frame pickup truck. This, on the other hand, is a unibody construction. Now, I'm not going to go into the details of what that means, but as you can see, that is a frame. Well, this one doesn't really have one. The body is kind of molded with the frame, and you call it a unibody construction, and this is how the majority, I would say 99% of all crossovers are built, if not 100%. This one actually shares a lot of its components with the Bronco Sport and the Ford Escape. So this thing is gonna drive very similar to a crossover or a compact crossover, which is one of the biggest appeals about this vehicle is it's gonna drive a lot softer. You actually have four wheel independent suspension, unlike something like this, where you've actually got a solid axle in the back. And so it's gonna bounce around a little bit more than something like this that's going to keep a little bit more composed driving down the road. Very similar to every other compact crossover, which as you may know is kind of the hottest segment right now. Now let's talk about the length here because as I'm sure you can tell, this is a lot smaller than the Ford F-150 and the Ford Ranger, but it's not as small as you think. This is actually quite a large vehicle, even though it doesn't look like it on camera. The length of this vehicle is just around 200 inches, which is about the same size as a Ford Explorer, which is a mid size crossover. We're not talking compact crossover. We're talking midsize. It's actually about 18 inches longer than a Toyota RAV4, but about 11 inches shorter than a Ford Ranger. And I think that's a good size for this vehicle because anything shorter would have a compromised rear bed or compromised legroom. And this one actually has pretty good of both. And I'm going to show that in today's video. Now on the front end, I do want to talk about it because every single Ford Maverick comes with some of the bare minimums. Uh, and that's why this vehicle is so attractive or appealing is because even even though it's a relatively cheap price that we're going to discuss, it comes with some kind of need to have items. So you do have LED front headlights as standard, regardless of what trim level you get. Speaking of which, there are three trim levels of the Maverick. There is the XL, the XLT, and the top of the line Lariat, which this one in particular is. So all the features you're seeing here is kind of the top of the line version. Now, the second thing that you should know about this vehicle is the appeal. And why is it such a hot commodity right now? Well, that has to do with the pricing. And let me show you what the price pricing looks like on this particular vehicle right here that you're seeing on the screen. As you can see, here is the Maverick. You've got the two liter EcoBoost and the uh, eight speed automatic transmission. And this one has a purchase price of $36,935. And this is kind of the highest that you can get. I mean, they don't really sell for much more than that unless you're talking about dealership markups. But uh, all in all, you can barely price this one near 40,000 as like the top of the line trim. And that is where the appeal 
really starts for this vehicle. So pricing for the XL, which is the base model, like I said earlier, starts at just around $22,000. And then the Lariat version, just like this one, goes just under $28,000. And then obviously you can add additional features, as you can see here. There's about $8,000 in options on this particular model. But we're talking under $40,000, potentially as low as $22,000 for a four-door, four-and-a-half-foot bed pickup truck. That is kind of unheard of. And that brings me to the third thing you should know, and that has to do with the fact that every single Ford Maverick, regardless of what trim level you get, has four doors, seating for up to five, payload of around 1,500 pounds, and if you choose to get the towing package, which you can get with the upgraded engine, you can get up to 4,000 pounds of towing. I believe the base one has about 2,000 pounds, but if you do get a towing package, you get 4,000 pounds of towing capacity, and you can get all-wheel drive. The standard is front-wheel drive. So you can get this pretty much equipped to be a small pickup truck with 4,000 pound towing capacity and all-wheel drive for just around $30,000. Now, I know you guys like to see the particular payload of whatever trim level I'm showing you, and this one, according to the sticker, is 1,348 pounds, which really isn't bad. I mean, there are some full-size pickup trucks that don't even have this type of payload capacity just because they're fully equipped with lots of options. Okay, speaking of engine, let's talk about it because you can actually get two different engine options and two different drivetrains on the Ford Maverick. The base standard engine, regardless of what trim level you get, is gonna be a two and a half liter hybrid engine. Yes, you heard that correctly. You can get a hybrid as standard on the Ford Maverick. Now, that one comes with only one drivetrain option, and that is front-wheel drive. You cannot get all-wheel drive on the standard hybrid engine, and that engine is mated to a continuously variable transmission, a CVT. So if you guys are not particularly happy with CVTs, then you may want to choose the upgraded engine that this one has, which we'll talk about in just a second. But the hybrid produces 191 horsepower and 155 pound-feet of torque. Now, this is the impressive part of the hybrid. The MPG is 42 in the city and 33 on the highway, which is insane for a pickup truck. I mean, that's kind of unheard of. And that is the standard engine at the base $22,000 MSRP. Now, if you do choose to upgrade to this one, which is a two liter EcoBoost engine, you're gonna have a little bit more output, but a little bit of a sacrifice in MPG. This one in particular produces 250 horsepower and 277 pound-feet of torque, which is really pretty good amount of power for a vehicle of this size. Now, the other benefit of the two-liter EcoBoost is it's actually mated to a traditional eight-speed automatic transmission. So it's gonna feel a little bit quicker, a little bit torquier than your CVT. The other thing to note is MPG, well, it's a little bit of a sacrifice, or a lot of sacrifice, 20 in the city and 29 on the highway for a combined 25 but with this two liter you can get all-wheel drive now if you do choose the front wheel drive your fuel economy is going to be about one mpg better now the fifth thing you should know about the ford maverick is you do have an adjustable tailgate. So first of all, this is not a soft open, but that is part of the reason they're able to keep this vehicle at such a low price point. But what's nice here that I wanted to talk about is if you pull up this tailgate a little bit to loosen up this cable, you can actually pull this cable off of this bolt and attach it to this pin over here. I'm not gonna be able to do it with one hand to show you on the camera, but what that does is, is it essentially lifts up the tailgate to about this height, so you can actually stack larger pieces of plywood or two by fours or whatever have you, and lay it essentially flat on these wheel wells and flat on the tailgate to give you a longer work surface or a longer truck bed than this four and a half foot that comes standard on the vehicle. So that is a pretty unique feature that I've started seeing other manufacturers start doing but I think Ford may have been one of the first to have this type of adjustable tailgate now let's talk about the truck bed because that is the sixth thing you should know about this vehicle like I mentioned this is a four and a half foot bed which is actually larger than the Hyundai Santa Cruz so this is the largest truck bed in a compact pickup truck but there's only two out there now this four and a half foot is actually the same exact size as the Rivian R1T which is kind of funny because that vehicle is a lot larger than this one but the truck bed is is the same. The interesting things about this truck bed is Ford really went above and beyond in its engineering and design. First of all, do you see these divots over here and over there? That's actually places where you can place two by fours and kind of separate the surface area. So you can actually set a two by four here 
and essentially separate the back and the front. You can set two by fours here and you can really work around with the surface, kind of like a game of Tetris where you can stack different things in this truck bed to make it a little bit more efficient and more useful for when you're hauling things from your local hardware store. Now the next thing to talk about is there are up to 10 tie downs located within this vehicle. So you can tie down lots of different gear. So if you have bikes or some other accessories that you wanna tie down, there's lots of different places and Ford kind of prides itself on the number of different tie downs that are available in the back of this small four and a half foot bed. The other thing to point out back here is this one comes with the optional additional power outlet. So you do have a household outlet back here and you do have a light as well. So those are really nice features that you wouldn't really find, I don't even think in a Ranger, but you find it here in the Maverick. Uh, the other thing to point out back here in this very unique truck bed is this little storage compartment. So if you open this up, you'll actually find a storage compartment over here. And uh, this is where you can hide some things kind of out of plain sight, but it gets better because you can actually pull out this bottom section and then you have a pretty deep cubby over here. Like I'm not even, I'm just barely touching the bottom and you can fit like a water bottle or whatever have you and kind of keep it out of plain sight and keep it hidden. Really unique features of this truck bed that uh, you, know, you don't really see on very many other vehicles. So kudos to Ford for designing a very well engineered back end of this this four and a half foot bed. Okay, now for the seventh thing that you should know about the Ford Maverick, we're actually gonna talk about the interior. And uh, we'll take a look. It is kind of a pretty unique interior that isn't very common amongst other pickup trucks. Starting off, you know, you do have hard touch plastic all over. Uh, the only place that's really soft touch is just where you're gonna put your arm. Everything else is hard touch. But what I like here is they have some funky colors and different textures, making it a little bit more different than just, you know, cost cutting at its finest. I mean, this is kind of a unique way to keep costs low, considering this vehicle starts at just around $22,000 and still having something a little bit unique. So I do like the storage compartments here. You've actually got a bigger cubby back here that you can fit even more stuff, but this is kind of meant for large water bottles. And then you have this little extended area where you can fit another water bottle and make sure it doesn't kind of slide around. So really nice storage, considering this is a pretty small pickup truck. Uh, I do like this is kind of like a floating handle. So you hold on to this to open the vehicle and you've got these nice divots over here or uh, these nice screws looks really nice. The brown coloration is really nice. And then your typical Ford switches. But take a look over here. They've got this really cool texture. Again, this is hard touch plastic, but they went original with it. They made it look a little bit different. And this one is the Lariat. So of course you have the nice upgraded leather seats look really nice with this brown color. And just so you know, this is a cactus gray exterior color and the interior is called Desert Brown. Now hopping inside, uh, this is what the interior looks like and it's quite unique. As you can see, it's uh, not very expensive looking because you have cheap plastics all throughout, but it's kind of interesting in terms of its texture. Like this feels a little bit different than just your typical type of hard touch plastic. This over here has a texture to it. Um, just really nice coloration over here with the brown contrast to the blue. Uh, I really like the interior of this vehicle. It doesn't feel expensive by any means, but it also doesn't seem very cheap. It has some personality to it, which is what I like about it. Now, you can get this vehicle with heated seats, which my vehicle does have, and you can get the Bang & Olufsen sound system, which my vehicle also has. So this is kind of the top of the line upgraded version, but uh, the base version will not have this eight speaker audio system or heated seats. That is an option. Now, in typical Ford fashion, on the left-hand side, you do have your lighting controls, and then you have your trailer brake controller down here. For the steering wheel, you do have your adaptive cruise control functions, over here at the top and then your audio down at the bottom and then on the right hand side you do have your back and menu buttons and your voice activation for your center display now this one has the upgraded six and a half inch display but you can get this standard with the 4.2 inch display now it's got some functionality but nothing too crazy just what you would expect for you know a six and a half inch screen on a sub forty thousand dollar vehicle and again this is the kind of the top of the line you got your speedometer over here your tachometer and then coming over here here. This is your center display. This is the typical Ford sync system. Over here, you do have your uh, seek and track buttons and your volume and tune controls. Coming down here, are obviously your vents, and then you've got your climate controls over here. Everything is hard touch buttons, which is really nice. You do have dual zone climate control on this Lariat, and then I've even got a heated steering wheel on this vehicle. So you get all the bells and whistles that you would need, all of the goodies. Engine start stop button. You've got your 12 volt adapter. This is how you open your rear window. 
you do have to hold it down for it to open and close. Uh, you got some USB ports over here, lots of unique storage options, and then this is a wireless charger, but that is not standard. You do have to get this option on your vehicle. You've got your rotary shifter, which you've seen on other Ford products, your parking brake, and then this is your drive mode selector. So when you push this, you can kind of circulate through normal, through tow haul, uh, you know, mud ruts, slippery, lots of different drive modes. And then you've got your traction control, you've got your auto start stop button, and then you've got a hill descent control as well on this vehicle. So that's pretty nice to have. Um, another little unique storage compartment, more storage over here. You've got a center arm console that's actually pretty deep, uh, not too bad for a vehicle that's pretty small. Nice leather soft touch compartment over here. And then let's go over to the back seats and let's talk about what those look like. Now, coming into the second row, this is the eighth thing that you should know about about the Ford Maverick, and that is it actually has a pretty decent amount of legroom. First off, we'll start with the door panel. It's an exact copy of the front. You have that really nice texture over there. It looks pretty cool. Same leather seats, but climbing back here, let me show you what that looks like. Um, this is pretty much me sitting behind myself, and I've got a really good amount of legroom. Ford says there's 36 inches of legroom in the second row, which is a pretty decent amount. That's actually uh, really good considering this is a compact uh, pickup truck. Now, in terms of headroom, also really good. I mean, there's probably about six inches of space above me. So even if you're taller than me, I'm five foot nine, you're not gonna have a problem sitting back here. Um, you do have some USB ports back here and you do have a power outlet. So thank you Ford for doing that. Not everybody does that. And I think it's a necessity here in 2022. Now, the other main advantage of this vehicle is you do have, unlike most crossovers, under floor storage. So this vehicle actually has a pretty good amount of space back here uh, to just hide things out of plain sight. And I like that it's got a raised edge over here on the side so that it doesn't just kind of flop around. You can kind of keep things secure underneath the seat. And that's just another example of how much amazing storage is located in this vehicle. I mean, we showed you how much storage was in the door panels and the center arm console, even in that little cubby between the seats. And then you have under floor storage as well. Um, unfortunately, no storage in this armrest but you do have two cup holders back here. So really nice to have. And then you do have speaker grills kind of really cool integrated into that uh, C pillar. So overall a really nice second row for the Maverick. Now the ninth thing that you should know about this vehicle, because I'm sure you might be saying, hey, look, this is great on a vehicle that's almost $40,000, but what do I get if I get the $22,000 one? Well, the thing you should know is every single Ford Maverick comes with this eight inch touchscreen. Regardless of what trim level you get, you may have a smaller center instrument cluster display, but no matter what, you'll have the same eight inch touchscreen. And the nice thing about this touchscreen is, okay, maybe eight inches may not be enough for the year 2022, but keep in mind, this is a small vehicle. The other advantage is they all come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And so in this day and age, if you have something like that hooked up to your infotainment screen, it really just kind of opens up the world to all of the functionality. And I have the sync system on my Ford Bronco and it works really well. It integrates well with my Android Auto auto and does a really good job in its functionality. Now, another quirky thing to point out is you do have this kind of cubby over here. I don't really know what you would put back here because you obviously wouldn't be able to fit a phone, but maybe like some Twinkies or something. I'm really not sure what would go in there, but uh, you do have that on the Ford Maverick. Now for the 10th thing you should know about this vehicle, well, that is the driving impression. So let's hop inside and let's go for a ride. Okay, setting off in the Ford Maverick. Now I do want to apologize for the lighting. It is almost eight o'clock and well, well, the fall means it gets dark a little earlier. So hopefully you guys can see and hear me okay. Uh, but first impressions driving this vehicle, uh, you've got a really open view of the road. I mean, this thing looks like you have a giant windshield because you can clearly see both sides. No real major blind spots or anything like that. This vehicle, of course, does have blind spot monitoring, but even if you get the lowest trim level and you don't have blind spot monitoring, you should be okay because you can kind of tell the proportions of this vehicle. One thing that surprises me is this car is actually larger than it looks in photos. You know, you expect it to be a really small pickup truck, but uh, you know, I can't necessarily reach the other end of the vehicle like I can in like a small coupe or a small compact crossover. It doesn't feel very compact, doesn't feel very tight. It feels like a pretty spacious pickup truck, one that I could easily haul five people around in and not feel like I'm cramming them into a small little compartment. Okay, we'll do a little bit of an acceleration here with this two liter. So it's not bad. Uh, it does have a little bit of a delay. And, uh, you know, I am curious to kind of feel how the hybrid feels because 
That one is a non-turbocharged engine, but it is a larger displacement. So you may have a little bit less of a delay because obviously with turbochargers, you kind of have to wait for them to spool up. And uh, you know, it does take, it takes a little bit of time for that turbocharger to spool up. I will say, I think my uh, EcoBoost Ford Bronco, the 2.3 liter, spools up a little bit quicker on its turbo than this one does. Uh, but this is also a smaller output or smaller displacement engine at two liters. Uh, but it's not too bad. I mean, once you get it up and going, uh, this vehicle picks up pretty quickly. It's just kind of getting into that power range. Yeah, once, once you get it up in the higher RPMs, this thing actually accelerates just fine. And I imagine passing power on the freeway will be more than adequate. Now, in terms of how it rides on the road, um, it drives all right. I mean, this thing is a little bit rougher than some compact crossovers on the market that I've driven, especially some of the more recent ones, but it's not horrible. It doesn't jar you or anything like that. I mean, this is a pretty rough road and even though I can feel it, this is softer than a body on frame vehicle. This is still a four wheel independent suspension and you can feel it. It doesn't kind of bounce you around the road like some pickup trucks do. Uh, this thing rides just fine, but it's not gonna ride as good as some of the compact crossovers on the market. In terms of road noise, I can hear some of that coming inside of the cabin. Now, most of the time I drive with the music on, so I don't think I would really notice it. Um, I will say it's probably a little bit louder than some of the compact crossovers on the market as well but my RAV4 from 2018 was probably pretty similar. I'm just kind of comparing it to the latest compact crossovers, which kind of have the latest technology, latest sound ending. Uh, whereas, you know, this is maybe five or six years behind the latest compact crossovers in terms of uh, ride quality and sound quality. But what those compact crossovers don't have is four and a half feet of truck bed space to haul a bunch of different toys and things around. Uh, also, most compact crossovers do not have this 4,000 pound towing capacity. So, uh, you know, there's some very clear advantages of this vehicle over pretty much every other compact crossover, even the Santa Cruz included, because this has a four and a half foot bed. And I will say, I can totally see why people are kind of going head over heels for this vehicle because the proportions of this vehicle are much more appropriate for uh, driving in the city, parking it at you know shopping malls or hardware stores. I mean, it's not a massive vehicle like some of the pickup trucks are becoming. I mean, the latest pickup trucks are as large as the heavy duty pickup trucks from like 10, 15 years ago. So in a world where everything is getting larger and larger and more expensive, this thing is a perfect example of smaller and less expensive and it works. Now, I will say there are a lot of uh, dealerships charging markups on this vehicle and you know, the quality is nice, but I wouldn't think this vehicle really commands any type of markup uh, in any normal environment. I mean, this thing doesn't feel like a $50,000 vehicle, which is the price that some of these are going for nowadays. Um, I think this vehicle feels like a sub $40,000 vehicle based on just the quality of materials, the way it drives, uh, and that's okay but I just don't think this thing supports markups. So, you know, take that for what it's worth. If you do happen to buy one over markups, you know, maybe you find it appropriate. But for me, I don't think this vehicle is worth that. But you know, if you can find one of these for around $25,000, maybe even $30,000, I would say grab one because uh, it really is impressive and you're gonna use it. This isn't one of those vehicles where, oh, you know, you can't drive it here because it's too large or, you know, oh, I can't fit anything in it because it's too small. This is kind of the Goldilocks. It's not too big, not too small. It's really the perfect size pickup truck, especially for the majority of people out there who are buying compact crossovers. You know, you gotta consider one of these. Well, there you have it, folks. I do hope you enjoyed today's video of the Ford Maverick. Honestly, I can see why these things are such big hits. You get a compact pickup truck with four doors, seating for five, towing capacity of up to 4,000 pounds. And that's something you can't really get from any other crossover. Now, I will say some of the interior quality is a bit on the cheaper end, especially compared to some of the compact crossovers out there. But if you can find one of these between the 22 to $30,000 range, 
range, I think you're gonna be getting a steal because these things are very impressive. It's got pretty good pickup with the two liter EcoBoost and lots of cool tech on the inside like Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and a wireless charger. So again, I do wanna give a huge thank you to Ken Garf, West Valley Ford. If you guys are interested, make sure you reach out to them. Their information is down in the description below. And also, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for all of the weekly videos. Also, check out all of my social media down in the description below at Schwazy underscore. And as always, everybody, I hope you stay Schwazy, stay healthy, have a wonderful day.